So a newcomer to my channel named Craig Meyer came today and he left me a pretty interesting comment. And I have to say I agree with him. <laughs> so Craig Meyer wrote, I hope you can make more videos in the future that address just what it was about you that caused you to become so attached to this nutty woman in the first place. How you were misguided and manipulated in such a crazy situation. Because there are plenty of fellows out there who are sitting ducks just like you were, but don't know it yet. Such information, while I can imagine being humiliating to talk about, but at least you're hum uh, anonymous here. So it really could help them out, and I'm probably one of them myself. Well, Craig, I can't say I was manipulated. All I can say is that I was lied to. Lying and manipulation are not the same thing. I know a lot of people don't see the difference, but there is a humongous difference. You see, when you're being manipulated, you are voluntarily going along with it. But when you're being lied to, you're just being lied to. I mean, you sit there trusting somebody, and they're actually sleeping with you, eating with you, hanging out all day with you, talking with you all day, talking about building up a relationship. So you really don't see any reason why they would be lying. So it's just a fucking lie. Well, as to somebody manipulating you, well, that's a little bit different. Then you can actually tell the signs. You see things that are out of order and out of place. This is not manipulation. You see, the psychopath lies so well that they believe their lies. Now, that is the key to a genuine psychopath. Now, I know there's a lot of men out there that dated shitty women and say, oh, you're a simp if you like women and all that. I can see that. But you've never, ever, ever dealt with the covert narcissist before. They are a breed apart. They are Harley Quinn on ecstasy. If you all don't know who Harley Quinn is, well, she's the Joker's girlfriend. Anyways, the girl I knew, I, I owned a group of 900 people. <laughs> We were uh, an activist movement. She joined the group. After five months being in the group, we started talking more and more together. So after four months of that, <laughs> I knew her for about eight months, nine months. And she calls me up one night in the middle of the night and says, I just got beaten up, thrown out of my house, and raped. I said, did you go to the police? She said, no. I said, well, then don't bother me. Because even then I already knew that if you don't go to the police, you're full of shit. Anyways, I said, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I just hung up the phone. I just didn't want anything to do with it. I thought, maybe she's real. Maybe she's full of shit. I don't know. Anyway, she called me back about two hours later while I was in the shower. And she said, I'm thrown out of my house. I have no place to go. I'm sitting at the bus station right now, the bus terminal. I'm freezing my ass off. Can you help me? My first response was, can't your parents help you? Can't your family help you? She told me a whole story about no, they couldn't. I said, okay, fine. What would you like for me to do? She asked for me to go pick her up. Now, I didn't really like that idea because it was four hours away, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm soaking wet from in the shower. So I jump out of the shower, uh, drive down to pick her up, and I bring her back to my place. Where she keeps crying all night because she said she was beaten up and raped and abused and I didn't know what to do. So I gave her a cup of soup. Uh, I said, you can take a shower. Here's my guest room, you know, go sleep in the guest room for a few days, take a uh, load off, relax. Now, why did I do that? Because I am a Christian and my whole YouTube channel backs it up because everything that you ever seen me do on my YouTube channel, I've helped many men out. I'm a person who helps other people. That's my curse. But it's also my blessing. I'm good at what I do. So to me, she was nothing more than another person I took in the house. I have took it in about seven guys and about four women in my lifetime who needed a place to stay and they could stay the night. So I let her in. Uh, very soonly, after two days, she left and she went to her sister's house to pick up some clothing and stuff like that. I thought she would stay there. I didn't know what her plan was. She didn't really have a plan. But she ended up coming back to my house. When she was back at my house, she kind of liked it here. And she was already liking me because we already knew each other for like nine months. But we didn't really know each other for four months. But we knew each other for nine months. But we only started talking about like for four months. 
every time talk on Skype pretty much half the day together and have a good time. Everything was great. <laughs> you see, the covert narcissist is such a great liar that they lie so well that they actually believe their lies. What they do, okay, I actually heard here how to prevent men from being sitting ducks like I was. I could say I was a sitting duck. That's fine. But I can also say that that sitting duck, what she saw as a weakness, is actually my strength. My kindness is not weakness, it's kindness. Anyways, back to sitting ducks. <laughs> How can you as a man prevent running into one of these slutty little cocksucking whores? Well, I've made a couple of videos in the past saying what a psychopath is. So for one thing, be careful of the one night stand woman. Psychopaths have no boundaries, no respect, no honor, no caring, and no remorse. They have no ability to feel anything other than the, the, hum, the bodily orgasm. So they're out to constantly pleasure themselves. This is why they like to torture little kids, torture elderly, and torture children. They need the thrill. They live for the thrill. Everything is about a thrill for them. It's all about the drama. It's all about the story. It's all about the bad guy, the bad boy. She, mistook, stuck, she took me for a bad guy. Which is very stupid because if she actually really knew me, she knew I was a Christian. Anyways, back to the point. How do you know if you're a sitting duck for a woman? Well, if you know a woman is looking at you, <laughs> interested about you, and asking things about your life that you would actually think that nobody would really ask you if they're just meeting you for the first time. Like, what is your income? What car do you drive? That kind of stuff? Stay away from those psychos. If they ask you any kind of information that is completely irrelevant from not even knowing you yet, stay away from them. Another great way to look out for these psychopathic women is, like I said, the one night stand. If they want to sleep with you right away on the first night, tell them to get the fuck out because I guarantee you 1,000 million percent they are a psychopath. Don't, geesh, don't be flattered by these women. Don't think, oh, they're so great that she wants to sleep with me. No, they are the psychopaths. Real women want to build a relationship with you before they get into the bed with you. They don't want to sleep with you on the first night. They, they want to know who you are. Don't fall for the trap. And come that first night I was with my ex. I almost mentioned her name there. <laughs> See, this is really hard for me, guys. You got to understand the only reason why I'm anonymous to you guys all right now is because I have a court case going. Once this case is over, I'll be making more live footage. I'll make live video of me, no problem. But until then, I have to stay anonymous because that fucking dirty, downright, low-life, scumbag, cocksucking whore that she was has tried to sue me for slander on my YouTube channel. I have been sued for it. And I won. Because there's no mention of her name in any of my videos. And I have been anonymous. So once the court case is over, I will no longer be anonymous to you all. As a matter of fact, if you speak to me on Skype, I will put my video camera on. You can see exactly who I am. I'm not trying to hide from you. I'm trying to... Uh, what do you call that? Dim the fire. Put the fire out. I don't want to cause no more shit with her, man. Because I'm about ready to kill her anyways. I've been through so much hell with her every single day. It's a fight for me not to go over there and blow her head off. That's the honest truth. Doesn't mean I'll act on it. Doesn't mean I'll go all Elliot Roger on her. But it means that's the fucking truth about it. Every single day I wake up in the morning and I'm so pissed off that I spend at least 15-20 minutes calling myself back down because I am so furious of what she did to me. It's not like she got one up on me, which she thinks she has. It's the fact she screwed with me in the first place that pisses me off. Because this is like I told you, the psychopath is so fucked up. The night I met her, I told you, if you screw with me, if you fuck around with me, I will sue you. Because I have brought other people into my house before, because I am kind of like a rescue agency here. People who need a place to stay for the night can have a place to stay in my guest room. There's nothing in there to steal, there's nothing in there to take. It's basically just a bed and a nightstand, that's it. You can sleep in there for one or two nights, then you get the fuck out. I'm a, I, I guess I'm kind of like a missionary in that way. But what makes sense as well, because I'm a Christian. And it also backs up my channel, because my channel is out there to help people. As you can see, I'm just a big walking fucking dumbass that goes around helping everybody. 
I'm going to continue on part two for you all. It's the same video, but I actually cut it off at 10 minutes, and I'm going on the next 10 minutes now. When I let my ex into the house, she wasn't my girlfriend yet. We slowly, over time, built a relationship. We were together for 10 months, <laughs> but not one of those days did I ever drop my guard. Nope, never did. Her behavior was weird. Her stories changed every day, depending on her mood. One day, it was, I was abused. Next day, uh, it was, uh, I was abused and raped. And the next day, it was, uh, oh, he just threw me out. And, <sighs> you see, I went to pick up a girl who I believed was in serious mortal danger. When I picked her up, I realized she had no bruises on her. I wanted to throw her back already and say, go fuck yourself, you lying little whore. But for some reason, the way she was, like, jumping on me and throwing herself into my arms, like, okay, I can't really just get rid of her now. She's kind of my responsibility. That's the thing that guys do. That's what you need to be careful of. When a woman makes you feel like she is your responsibility, they are not your responsibility in any form whatsoever. And if they make you feel like you, they are, get rid of them because that is a psychopath. Psychopaths lie. Their lies are truth to them. They say, not what you want to hear, as many believe. They say what they need to say to stay another day. They say whatever makes them comfortable to be able to stay another day. It is not about controlling you as much as it is to stay another day. Sure, they control you. Sure, they try to control you. But as you've seen in my previous videos, I also mentioned she never had the ability to control me. Every bit of power that I gave her came from me. And every time I knew where the power she got to come from. And she threw the relationship at me. It was because I knew that the relationship was being thrown at me because I actually cared about the relationship. I cared. And I realized after a while, <laughs> I was the only one that cared. But when I directly confronted her about, are you just using me? Are you just taking advantage of me? She lied right to my face and said, no, how could you ever say that? She started crying, started throwing a fit, saying, okay, I'm gonna pack my bags and leave. That's how you feel. And she gave me the whole drama about it. It was all a lie. Every bit of it. I mean, imagine going through a half hour fight with a woman who's packing in her bags, running around the house saying, see, you never loved me. See, you never cared about me. You're just using me for sex. And she's throwing in her, her, her t-shirt there into a suitcase and a, and a pair of jeans. And she's acting like you offended her. When the truth is, all you really did is say a statement like, if you are using me, I will throw you out. Are you just using me? They get offended right away and they start crying and throwing the crocodile tears around to make you go, sorry I ever asked. <laughs> I was just making sure. You know? Just, they really do not care how they lie to you. And the whole time you're thinking, why would this woman be lying to me if we are sleeping together, living together, and we've been together for almost a year, why would she be doing this? Because if the relationship falls apart, she's going to walk away empty-handed. I'm the one that's going to be gaining. I had tons of sex. I got my mild oats sewn. I had boobies in my face. I stuck my dick between some tits. You know, I had everything I got out of the relationship. If, the, if she broke the relationship off, she would be the one that lost in the end. Because I already got everything I needed out of it. So, why would she then pull the con? The con is for a roof over her head, as I've mentioned before. They're so psychotic that they abuse themselves and then say, you abuse them. What do I mean by this? They throw sex at you like water and air. As in, there's so much sex, it's like having water and air, which is always available. So you're thinking to yourself, how could this woman have sex with me, say she loves me, and it not being real? That's not possible. You would believe that everything is fine. Well, 
I kept my guard up all that time because I still didn't trust her. Something always seemed iffy. And Craig, let me tell you this right now so that you do know. If you have ever felt like you're in a situation where you cannot put your finger on what is wrong, get the fuck out. Here's why. The reason you cannot put your finger on what is wrong. The reason you cannot figure out why you are seeing what you are seeing but not understanding what you are seeing even though you are seeing it is because you are not in control anymore. She is. What do I mean by this? Men tend to give females power. They actually give them power over themselves. Such as, you're with your woman, and you mentioned something in your past, and now all of a sudden that's being used against you. Or, because you feel like you trust this woman, you give her your bank card to do some groceries with. Or, you loan her her car, your car. Or, you give her a key to your house. You start trusting them, and that's what they are waiting on, for your trust. So the whole time you actually believe... You are building a solid relationship because this woman, after all, is throwing herself in your arms, having sex with you all the time, treating you as if you are the, her knight in shining armor. Life for her cannot exist without you. You are her everything. Without you, she will die. They even play that part the whole time. They are weak. They cannot take care of themselves. They need you around to feed them. And to take care of them. So you're thinking, okay, this person really needs me. So if they really need me, and they're sleeping with me, and they're living with me, then clearly this must be the real deal. You see, men are not that bright in that way. They don't understand that a woman could be so evil to take advantage of him. Because he is being so polite. But the thing is, the man is not that polite to other men. Men become extremely polite to females. A man can say to a woman, Oh, you're so beautiful. And then two seconds later come across another guy and go, Fuck you, dude! You see how that swaps? But when a woman comes walking in the room, Oh, look at her, isn't she stunning? Wow, she's beautiful. And they start talking to this woman the way that the woman wants them to talk to her. Which is complete control. And that's what women, these kind of women do. A lot of women lie to their boyfriends. A lot of women cheat on their boyfriends. But the narcissist spins a web of bullshit. A gigantic web. Everything that they talk about is interconnected to each other. So you would think that it's reality because it's so well connected to each other. But then the story changes over time. And, so, and no longer do the pieces fit together. Her personality starts to change. She can no longer keep up the facade of who she wants you to think that she is. Have you ever heard of the six-month relationship? That's usually what we would call the honeymoon relationship. The six-month relationship. Those are the narcissists out there. They're the ones that need the constant source of supply. They need the constant attention. They need the constant fix for love. And pretty soon... Your exciting ass, who was very exciting to her at first, becomes boring when she started seeing you walking around the house in your underwear. You're no longer a mystery. You're no longer a surprise. <laughs> so now you are just the target. Because now you are making her unhappy because you are no longer the fantasy that she had in her head. That's all you ever were to her is a fantasy. She sees John Wayne... And instead of just seeing John Doe, the average man out there, she sees Batman instead of seeing average man. <laughs> and that's how these females operate. And they justify their behavior by thinking, okay, there's plenty more fish in the sea. They don't connect to you in any way at all. They don't care about you. They don't. They just care about themselves. They only live for themselves. They're only out for themselves. And you as a man need to take control and say, okay, I'm in control here, bitch. If you don't like it, there's the fucking door. I pay the rent. I pay for the food. I pay for the groceries around here. Bend to me. Give in to me. Or get the fuck out. 
Es esmu.